Typical severe thunderstorm. This is something maybe we'll see in May across the plains. You can have updrafts going into that storm or rising air 50 to 100 miles per hour. So it is quickly moving its way up into the clouds. And as it does so, it's holding some things up inside of that cloud. And that includes hail and grapple. That's all this little bit of uh, white you see dodging around. And the area we have to look at inside the storm is a little slice. That's between 10 below and 20 below zero Celsius. It's kind of a critical layer in the atmosphere. It can be at different heights, but where that temperature Temperature is that's what's important. Those updrafts hold up the ice. They're banging into ice crystals and the lighter particles head up into the cloud and you see a separation of charge, positively charged ice crystals up in the top of the anvil. And then you've got these negative charges here around the middle and bottom layers of your thunderstorm. And basically that separation leads to lightning strikes. All of weather is just looking for balance and they're looking to balance the charge in this particular situation. Now something like last week, our updrafts were 10 to 20 miles per hour, much weaker. It's just rising air coming Coming in that has to do with your instability and basically a few things can change that whether you have sunshine out ahead of it, which we didn't have last week. That was the big defining factor there. Uh, there are a few other things dry air aloft or a cold pocket aloft that can change your instability. When you have that weak updraft, you have less ice suspended. You have less of these ice particles banging together and you don't get as much separation of charge that leads to minimal lightning. If it's all already balanced out, you don't need the lightning to balance things out.